Welcome to a tutorial video on Bitsy 8. So in a previous video, we learned we can use variables. Variables are available to us as part of the inventory tool. So we have items, things we can collect within our room by the avatar and are used up and become part of their item counts. However, sometimes we want to establish data that tracks things that are not items. So if we want to collect, gather things, we probably want items. But there might be some cases where we want to track things like interactions or other things potentially in the same room or across rooms where items don't quite work out the way we want. So for those purposes, we can use variables. And I showed in a previous video how I created a setup where I had two different sprites and interacting with either one of them would increase the count for them. So for button one, which is right here for me, we have button one equals button one plus one. So this over here, this variable, and then say the value of the variable, you have interacted a total of blank times for button zero and for button one. Now for this video, I wanna create something a little different. So I've added a third button, which I've named button two, and I've placed it over here on the left-hand side of the room. So what I want to do, though, is I want to track interactions such that an interaction with button zero increases its number, an interaction with button one increases its number, its number, but interaction with button two decreases both those back to zero. In other words, a reset. So I've created a duplicate of the previous button right here, and I placed it in the room. Now let's walk through how I'd want to set this up. So I've popped out the dialogue tool right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and do two things. So the first thing we need to do is we need an item action. So in a previous video, I, shot, I showed how we can say various item counts and the variable names, and there's part of item and variable actions. So what I wanna do though, is I wanna change the value of a variable, or in other words, set a variable value. So this right here. Now notice, unlike when we see when we work with items, for variables, it's a little bit different. And it expects us to click in here and then supply the variable name. It's gonna give us some hints, but it expects us to type it. So what I want though, is I wanna set button zero. And then notice as soon as I started typing, it found it for me, button zero. And I wanna set it back to zero. So let's run it all the way down to zero. And let's do it one more time. So item action or variable action, set variable value, same thing, set button one, back down to zero. Now let's add text to clue a player or reader into what I've done. So dialogue, dialogue, interactions reset. Okay, so the first thing that's gonna happen is button zero is gonna go back to one, button one's gonna go back to zero right here, and interactions reset. So let's play this to see this, see this in action and pay attention over here to the inventory tool in variables in particular. So we're tracking interactions. So I've interact with this, notice this went up by one, and you've interacted a total of one times. Now let's come over to the reset. Notice these were reset, they flashed, interactions reset. Let's come over here. And now we've done this. Now we've done this, and of course over here, inventory updated for variables. If I move back to reset, finally, we reset again. So what this example is pointing out is if you don't need to actually collect something, which is to say an item that would be used up in a room, you probably want variables instead. What variables allow us to do is again, collect more data and interact with it in a way that exceeds a simple item count. In many ways, items can be very useful. We can collect keys, we can collect T's, we can collect all kinds of things, and we can show how branching lists can respond to those. But, Often we want things that are slightly more complex. So in this example, we're tracking interactions across three different sprites and two different values. And if you find yourself in a situation where you want to track multiple things, you probably want a variable. You might want an item, but you probably want a variable. In which case you're going to add a new variable right here. 
type in the name you want and its initial value. Generally, I recommend using numbered values, so zeros and through whatever you want, but you could also use slightly more complex values if you feel comfortable doing that. Again, numbers are kind of the preferred easy thing to track. You know, zero, one, two, however. At the same time, remember we have the ability to set variables as well. So if we come back over here to the dialog tool, come down to add, as we saw for item and variable actions, we can work with items, set item count, increase item count, decrease item count, say item count, which we saw in a previous video, as well as set variable value, which we've now done, change variable value, which we'll see very soon, and say variable value. Now keep in mind when you're working with items right here, that especially if you change the item count of an item while it's being collected, so up here and before the end, that change will happen and then it will be used up as part of that final part of the interaction outside of what we can change with the dialog tool itself. So keep that always in mind. Working with item count for a particular item will happen at the end of the interaction kind of chain of events. But when it comes to sprites and comes to variables, because they're two different things and they don't interact directly with each other unless we establish it, those allow us to set up those interactions. So potentially then, in a more complex game or project, we could have multiple things we're interacting with, all of which can be tracked by different variables or the same variables. We could use branch lists and we can use these kind of resets of changing the value of a variable and create that additional complex that we might want of multiple goals and multiple tasks before we potentially move across rooms or do things in the same room. So using variables really opens up the door for us tracking many more things than we would with just items. Again, keys, keys, simple things like that, you probably want items. Something a little more complex, tracking multiple interactions as this example points to, you probably want variables. In which case, the door really opens up for us doing multiple things like this, doing multiple interactions, see button one right here, or button two like that, or of course button zero, doing a lot more. Lots more ability to track things, establish goals and tasks, as we think of in greater complexity and really covering the full realm of different actions and interactions as part of Bitsy 8. Thanks for watching.